Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. We're back in the fish room, we're going to be doing various jobs, but today I'm concentrating on this tank. So this is the tank where we were holding the Congo Tetras that we moved over to the new Congo Biotope. If you haven't seen that one yet, go back and check out the last video, it's well worth it, I think. But we're going to put snakeheads in this tank. So the snakeheads are currently in this tank here, and I want to move them down here for a couple of reasons. The main reasons are these tanks here, just to give you a bit of background, they're all two foot or two foot-ish long, so they're all end on. And my original plan with all these tanks was they were going to be breeding tanks, grow out tanks, quarantine tanks, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the snakeheads ended up in one of these just because it happened to be free at the time, which is fine. I mean, it's big enough for them, well, it's starting to get a bit small for them, but because I'm viewing it from the end panel rather than the side panel, the opportunity to see them, they're few and far between because they like to hide. They are quite elusive. When you do get a glimpse of them, they're absolutely fantastic fish. So I want to get them in a tank that I can see them a little more easily. So we're going to use this tank. We're going to get it cleaned out, scape it a little bit. Again, another minimal scape. I know that seems to be my thing, but I want to see the fish more than I want to see the fish hiding. Um, so we'll get it started. I'm going to get it drained out, cleaned up, uh, and then we'll get the fish moved over. So my thinking is that if I can't see the fish, I at least have a tank that looks nice. Anyway, I'm going to get this drained out, cleaned up, and then we'll come back when we start to scape it. So the plan is much like every other tank that I've ever done. I'm going to start with some soil at the back. That's plain old compost, no additives, no nothing, just normal garden compost from Wix. Then I'm going to add sand. That sand is kiln dried sand from BQ, Wick, somewhere like that. It's not, none of this is aquarium stuff. It's perfectly fine to use in an aquarium. Then I'm going to find some nice pieces of rock, fart about for a few minutes trying to make sure I've got them in the right orientation that I want. Then I'm going to find a nice couple of stones and get them in. After that, we'll stick in a few plants. And now we've done that, we can get the fish in there and talk a little bit about them. So the temperatures match, the water parameters are exactly the same as you would expect because we're in the same fish room. But I can just tell these are going to be a pain to catch. So it's worth saying that I'm not classing this as an aquascape. This isn't an aquascape tank. I know many people will say none of my tanks are aquascape tanks. This is just an environment to make the fish feel comfortable and let me view the fish. Um, hey, no. So they're very powerful fish, so I'm conscious that they could jump. We've got one in. So I'm going to need to drop the water level of this tank a little bit, which I meant to do it earlier. But they also breathe air. So these are... So they need a little bit of air at the top of the tank. So, a little bit of a gap at the top of the tank not only helps them give um, a bit more distance, so stops them jumping or prevents them jumping out, but gives them a little air gap as well so they can breathe air. So there's a lot of different varieties of chana. These are the chana goucher, the dwarf snake head, um, but amongst those varieties there's all different kinds of behaviours. Some are seasonal, so they require a drop in temperature and a raise in temperature. Um, that's the difference between the tropical and the subtropical fish. Um, they're found all over Asia um, and even to Middle East to Asia. I think Iran, Iran through to the rest of Asia, all the different types. Uh, 
and unfortunately for many of you, completely illegal. But not here. So in terms of general setup, that's pretty good, I think. We need to lower the water level a little bit more, maybe. I always like to put in floating plants when fish are at risk of jumping. That seems to put them off a little bit. So that's my top tip for the day. Um, but a few hiding places, I mean, there's no getting away from it. There's a fish that likes to hide. They're an ambush predator. They like to have places to go. But I've created a bit more space around the front where they can get out and about and be seen. I'm feeding them mostly a mix of earthworms, I've got some pellets, I've got some mealworms and just uh, trying to get a bit of variety in the diet, mostly live foods but they are starting to take pellets which is a good sign. So there's lots of space in there for them to find them. They seem to feed better on food as it's dropping so a little bit finicky to feed. You kind of need to get them interested and then drop the food in. Because um, once it lands on the, the bottom, they seem to take an age to find it and I quite often have to find myself picking it back out again because they kind of ignore it once it's on the floor. I might try and feed them now, but they obviously still a little bit stressed so they might not go for it, but let's pop a worm in. For food, I've got my little worm farm out the front. Um, so literally really useful box, it's very well named. Just go out and pick out a couple of nice smallish worms if I can find them. Uh, clean them off a bit and chuck them in. They've, their jaws are very well adapted to making light work of any larger worms. So no need to cut them up or anything quite so gruesome. But we'll take these, clean them up and offer them up, see if they go for it. So it's really as simple as what I'll normally do is kind of hold a worm like this. That would normally tempt them out. You see the thing wiggling. They'll usually come out and have a look if nothing else. But because I've just moved them around, they're probably a bit skittish. Uh, but I like worms because even when they do drop to the bottom, they still move around. So unlike pellets, once they're on the floor, that's it. So if they miss them on the way down, they just don't eat them. Worms will continue to wiggle. And I can step back a little bit, give them a bit of space and see if they'll come out. And well, we give them a little bit of space. I know somebody that definitely won't turn down a worm or two. instantly. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. This is very difficult doing camera work while holding worms. Right, let's try that again Humphrey, see if you can take more than half a millisecond to eat that. Nope, gone straight away. Humphrey will jump out the water to get a worm. So that's my snakeheads, that's their home for the next few months at least. I think they're an awesome fish, I've wanted them for such a long time. Ever since I first saw a picture of them I thought, they are awesome, I've got to have some of them. And now I've finally got some, so I'm really enjoying learning more and more about them. Um, I, I just think they're fantastic fish, so unusual, such an oddball, so powerful, so beautiful if nothing else. I hope you like them too. We'll be having plenty more videos of them over the next months and years, hopefully, to come. 
Uh, so if you can't keep them where you are, hopefully you can enjoy me keeping them. But as ever, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't already on your way out. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!